some of the sights and sounds from the Remembrance Sunday ceremony in London, England, the day on which Britain pays tribute to fallen British Armed Forces member. Uh, ceremonies took place in Britain. Uh, they took on a slightly different look this year with a spectacular display. More than 800,000 handmade red ceramic poppies displayed, and Sun News contributor Simon Kent wrote about it for uh, Sunday uh, Sun Papers. Joins us now from London. Simon, you know, I'd heard about this display, and not until I was reading your story and looking at the pictures that go with it did I realize how massive this thing is. Uh, how long does it take people to walk through? Because that's what happens, right? People come out, they take a look, and they walk through. Yeah, people can walk through. It does take over an hour and a half, two hours. It took me two hours to work my way right around the moat, and it's set up at the moat at, uh, at, at the Tower of London because there's that many people who have come to see it, that many people have been moved by the whole concept of over 800,000 of these handmade ceramic poppies, each one remembering the dead, representing the, the British and colonial dead from the First World War. It is a truly stunning achievement, and it's all predicated on a very famous poem by a, uh, a very famous World War I Canadian soldier. All right, so 888,246 handmade blood-red ceramic poppies, and that is one for each British and colonial soldier, sailor, and airman. Uh, as you say, it all comes from, from John McRae's poem. Um, it, it really has taken on a life around the world. Is it as well known in, in Britain, in Australia, uh, in the other colonial countries mm. you've uh, lived in as it is here? It certainly is, and certainly over here in Flanders Fields, it is read as part of the school, the school curriculum. And the whole notion of that display of the poppies was that, and those opening lines in Flanders Field, the pop, in Flanders Fields, the poppies grow row on row. And it's all taken off from that notion. The Brits have embraced it. And let me tell you, the Metropolitan Police at one stage said to people, please don't come. We've got too many people coming to the Tower of London. There were so many people, almost four million. And got, the British public said, well, hold on, you're not going to stop us. We're going to come anyway. So now it's open 24 hours a day, and there is a push to keep the display open even after Remembrance Day tomorrow, November 11. So we're looking at pictures right now. Big Ben also uh, decked out with images of poppies uh, being projected up upon it. It, it is a, uh, a, real, um, a real act of remembrance going on in London right now for the centenary of the First World War, isn't it? It is indeed. It's a, it's a real act of remembrance and a real honour to those troops of, of, of the, um, you know, the Commonwealth allies. The, they used to be called colonial soldiers. But it is really a, a solemn occasion. We saw the Queen there on Sunday. She was at the Cenotaph in Whitehall and she wasn't going to be perturbed by threats or perceived threats from terror. She turned up, as did all the royal family on Sunday. And all eyes tomorrow, I feel here, will be turning towards the Tower of London turning towards that emblematic display of poppies, which really touches the heartstrings for a lot of people, and it really drives home the immensity and the scale of the human loss from the First World War. A couple of uh, points on this. One, I am uh, very impressed that they decided not just to remember the British soldiers, sailors and airmen, but, but all the colonial soldiers that went, because we, we essentially were joined at the hip with Britain at that point, as were Australian troops. Britain, the motherland declared war. We all answered the call. We all went. It was uh, very different later on, and it's different now. But back then, we answered the call. So I'm grateful that they did that, but um, mm. also impressed at how much effort has been put in to the remembrance. I, I think that the government here in Ottawa has done a decent job but they've been criticized every step along the way for trying to glorify war and, uh, you know, pushing this military history. Has there been controversy about this in Britain in terms of the amount of, of money spent or, or the government trying to glorify war? No one has yet over here tried to mount that straw man argument that it's glorifying war. At the Remembrance Parade yesterday at the Cenotaph, it was an act of remembrance. People recall the loss and they honour the loss of all those people. And that gets back to the display of poppies. There is no celebration of war. And all those colonial troops, you mentioned Canada, Australia, New Zealand, but also India, uh, and Jamaica, the West Indies, 
there were, from all around what was then uh, the empire sent troops. So many of them fell. So many never came home. This is a symbolic act of reverence and remembrance, and I think it should be commended. And it's very real here, I guess, because England and the United Kingdom was much closer to the battlefields. That doesn't diminish the loss in Canada, but I think Canada should be really proud of the way it, as a nation, remembers those who have served, witness all the poppies that are worn in Canada, and Canada should be doubly proud of John McRae and his poem that set the tone for Remembrance Day here in the United Kingdom in 2014. All right, Simon, great story. Thanks for bringing it to us, and we'll make sure we have that posted up on social media.